Hey everyone, I'm Rather Go Herent, and today we're going to be starting the Arkham Horror Campaign, The Return to the Path to Carcosa. I've already uploaded a session zero talking about my plans for the characters and the campaign, but to be quick, as much as I'd like Path to Carcosa, I don't think it has any specific planning that you need to make for it. And as you can already see, I'm playing Jenny and Lily. And their decks look like this. For Jenny, I'm going to be going for a big money hoarder deck utilizing the new cards from Edge of the Earth, especially the Black Fan. And for Lily, I'm going to be building a generic guardian style fighter using melee weapons that she's not allowed to use guns. And I'm planning on using the Cyclopean Hammer from Edge of the Earth as her primary weapon, but for now, she'll be using the Dragon Bowl. As it heads up, the only italicized text I'll be reading is the agenda cards, the act cards, and any of their story cards relevant to what's happening in the scenario. All of the flavor text outside the scenario, I'm just going to be ignoring. It's nothing unique to me, it's nothing that informs the gameplay of the video, and there's really, I think, very few people who would be here interested in seeing the flavor text of the scenarios. If I'm wrong, then tell me in the comments and I'll start doing that in future playthroughs, but for now, I'm acting on the assumption that no one really cares about flavor text, and what you're interested in is seeing how all of this pans out. So, without further ado, let's get into the scenario. First off, let's do our mulligans. On Jenny's side, I'm really happy to see Magnifying Glass. Three book is hard to work with, and we need cards like that to actually get off the ground. I think I'm going to keep Faustian Bargain. It's hard to imagine that not being correct. And Dario Alamen and a second Magnifying Glass is actually pretty good. It gets us to a point where we have a workable book fairly quickly. On Lily's side, I've taken the Fist Discipline, because having a base value of five fists turns out to be really, really strong most of the time. And I'm going to toss all of this looking for Dragon Pull and prepared for the worst, because those cards are disproportionately important to this deck. But I've got my Dragon Pull, and a Scrying to put in one of its slots. For Lily's Mulligan, I would really like to have drawn one more spell to get the Dragon Pull online. However, hopefully we'll be able to draw into one pretty quickly. And I suppose equally importantly, there's really not that many enemies in this scenario that I will need to kill with the Dragon Pull. With the Mulligans out of the way, let's get into the actual scenario. Agenda 1A, the third act. The theater is eerily silent. The old wooden floor creaks beneath your feet, and the light rain gently patters on the roof as you explore the auditorium. There are more rotting corpses among the seats, and the rest of the crowd has vanished. Six Doom Threshold. And Act 1A, Awakening. You pinch yourself to see if you're dreaming, and sure enough, your skin stings and reddens. You take a few deep breaths and try to think rationally. Whatever's going on, you must explore the theater to learn the truth of the matter, and I'll need six clues to advance. And we spawn in the theater, two shroud, and no clues. Before I take my first turn, I need to say that for a while I used this as my level zero deck testing grounds. I just really like Curtain Call as a scenario. This is probably my favorite first scenario in the game. And as a consequence, I know the scenario really well. So I'm going to do something that looks insane, but is not wrong. I'm going to go first as Lily Chen. Yeah, this seems crazy. I, I know I have Stand Together and I would like to use it, but I'll use it next turn. As Lily Chen, I'm going to go first. I'm going to go to Backstage. Backstage is a three shroud, one clue location. And when I reveal it, I put two of the set aside Backstage doorway locations into play at random. And while I'm here, each hidden trenchery counts as three instead of one when I'm counting hand size. So here are the backstage doorways. And now that I've revealed those, I'm going to pop into one of them as Lily Chen. One shroud, two clues, add to by two or more while investigating the rehearsal room, take one horror. And then I'm just going to leave. As Lily's whole turn, I've just moved three times. And that's because, I'll show you real quick, there's an encounter card called Fanatic. We've got a couple of them in the deck. And when you spawn, so you'll spawn on the location with the most clues, and you'll move the clues from the location to the fanatic. Which means that if I reveal this location, I'm not going to have to fight that guy. He's just going to spawn there, take the clue off the location, which helps me get the victory points. And I don't need those clues to win the scenario, I just need to have them off the location to get the victory. So, by doing this, I've ensured I don't have to fight the most common enemy in the scenario, and in fact, it's helping me and saving me actions. On the other end, for Jenny, I'm going to use Falskin Bargain entirely on herself. Then I'm going to use four of those resources to play Dario, play a pair of Magnifying Glasses, and we use Dario to gain two resources. Actually, rather than using Dario, I'm going to just move to where Lily is, which brings us to the upkeep phase. Sadly, no more equipable assets for Lily. One of, I believe it was six Doom. Yes, and encounter cards. I didn't shuffle that, I don't think, after... No, I must have, because otherwise the fanatic would be on top. So, Lily has rats, or Jenny has rats, rather. And hidden cards don't quite work so well when you're playing two-handed, but still. It's not going to have that big of an impact. 
Now, unfortunately, what these treacheries usually will end up saying is just take one direct damage and horror, and it's fairly hard for me to play around them forever. However, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's unpleasant, I don't like it, but I can live. So, Lily's gonna need to kill these rats. I'd have to get auto fail, so I'm willing to risk dealing one damage to Jenny and just punch over. I mean, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. So I'm going to do that again and kill the rats. And then I'm going to play stand together to have both of us two resources. Because the dragon pole is really not doing a whole lot right now unless I have two spells in play and I need more spells to do anything reasonable. I probably should have considered cycling overpowers on that first swing, but considering it backfired, I'm kind of glad I did it. For Jenny, I'm going to tap Dario as her first action and get two resources. Actually, I don't need to do that because I bring the Midnight Oil. I'll just play that instead to investigate at 6 to 3. Because I've got Dario online, now that I'm at 10. Minus 1, not a big deal at all. I'll take the clue. I'll move to the next location. And 7 Shroud, while you're investigating at Prop Shop, it gets minus 1 Shroud for each horror on you. After you fail a skill test while investigating here, take 1 horror. So I'm going to move Jenny back to where Lily is, and we're going to start getting into just how slow you're able to take this scenario at the start of next turn. For now, let's take our upkeep phases. Two of six doom, and let's draw some cards. A fanatic. This is exactly why I've been playing the weird way we have, and now we just need to determine which room we want to spot him on. He's a 3-2 enemy, and he's going to spot at the location of the most revealed clues, so I can just pick between these right now. And he'll take control of a clue when he spawns there. If you kill him, you'll get the clue, but we don't ever need to do that. And this one actually seems more difficult to deal with. The other one I can just easily either take to horror to deal with, or I can use something like Intel Report to clear them out without ever actually testing and getting no penalty. So I'm going to choose to deal with this location using a fanatic. Painful Reflection goes into your threat area. When I play an event, I reveal a random token in the bag. If it's a face token, I cancel the event, take one horror, and discard Painful Reflection. That's obnoxious, but not the biggest problem in the world. So for Lily, my first two actions, I want to play Dragon Pole and Scrying for four resources. And I'm going to use the Scrying on Jenny's deck, I believe, to make sure that she draws something relevant to do with her turn, because she's likely just spending her actions drawing, trying to find an intel report to deal with this. Because you can actually take this scenario comically slowly. And in fact, I fully plan to, because I want to sandbag to get Jenny an absurd amount of experience. Jenny's deck has a card in it, her unique asset, it's the alternate one for her called the Green Man Medallion. And this allows me to convert resources into experience for the next scenario. I have to spend all the resources I get at a rate of three resources to half an experience on the same item, or the same card rather, but that's not too big of a restriction because there's a lot of high experience cards that I want to put in Jenny's deck. So I'm planning on taking the game really, really slowly. I'm completely fine with that because this is actually one of the most sandbaggable scenarios in the game. And when I say sandbag, what I mean is hanging out and not winning when you easily cut off. And the reason you would do that is for some sort of benefit like Green Man Medallion. Anyway, I'm going to use Scrying on Jenny's deck and try to put something relevant on the top three cards. I kept searching the deck to use Scrying. What I need to do instead is when I use Scrying, I need to draw the top three cards of the deck so I don't see anything else. And unfortunately, none of that is any sort of draw or any sort of meaningful asset. Going to make sure that I get fine clothes not drawn and just take the other two. Going to draw one card. I'm going to tap Daria, and I'm going to play the fine clothes. Because there is a use for parlay in this scenario, it's not a great one, but it's the actually relevant right now if it does come up. And that's it for our round. Upkeep phase, sees yet another non-spell asset for Lily, and predictably unexpected courage for Jenny. Three of six doom, and our encounter cards. Well, I'm not happy to see this, but again, we have all the time in the world, it's not actually a huge problem. What Spirit Storm does is it attaches to your location, and after you leave the location, you either lose an action or take a horror, unless you place one of your clues on that location. Which, like, as an action is pretty terrible. I can get it back relatively easily, but I'm not happy about it. And Lily gets a swarm of rats, thankfully on her this time, so she can't beat up Jenny. Also, why on earth did I use a damage counter instead of clicking the heart? And that brings it back to our turns. And I know it looks preposterous right now. We've gotten one clue, and the fighter isn't set up yet. But also, that's just completely fine. It's not a big deal. I'm going to scry Jenny's deck again. I keep searching 
These are the two that should have been on the top that I knew about. No, find clothes I knew about. I keep searching the whole deck, which I'm not supposed to do. I'm supposed to deal out the top three. Well, I definitely won't welcome that good. Cunning's all right, and I don't need a second set of clothes. Oh, uh, that's going to be our second action. We're going to kill the rat as our first action, obviously. I'm getting ahead of myself. Rat's dead. Really should be cycling these overpowers. I don't know why I keep not doing that. I'm going to draw a card as my last action. Oh, this went off ages ago, didn't it? I have to imagine it did. I think that's the first draw action I've taken on Lily, so I'm just going to take one one and discard it now. On Jenny's turn, I'm going to draw one card. I'm going to play it immediately because I need well connected and play this character to actually feel good. And I'm going to use my last action to toss this location out, or this um, Mythos card out. Don't feel like dealing with that effect. I'll just get the clue instead. And now we have essentially just moved to the right once and revealed some locations and not actually done anything helpful since turn one. I'm telling you, it's fine. It's not a big deal. We are now at four of six doom and counter cards. This does nothing because Lily is the one with the hidden cards. Now you both have painful reflection, unfortunately. And Lily's encounter card is the King's Edict. This is actually very helpful. It's not a bad thing at all. It moves the second clue to the Fanatic. And he gets plus one fight for that effect. And because he existed, he, this card doesn't get Surge. Alright, so I've just gotten a phone call and I had to like recollect myself and figure out exactly what I was supposed to be doing. I want to go first with Lily so that I can scry to have something else on top of her deck. I remember that. I don't remember what this card is, but I remember hating it. I'm going to go first with Lily and use scrying again. Nope. I'm supposed to deal him out. Ah, uh, yeah, the second fine close. There we go. Finally, Intel Report. Put Intel Report on the top. If I had Bandolier, I could play Enchanted Blade to fill my second Arcane slot. And I guess, realistically, I could play... I really need to draw a second spell, like, now. So I'm just going to draw cards and try to find something. Prepare for the worst is kind of the opposite of what I'm looking for. I'm a well past ever needing that, so I'm going to draw another card. Well, Lily will work someday. This is the first time I've ever struggled to find a second spell for Dragonfall. I think I've got six spell assets in the deck. It turns out I have eight spell assets in the deck, so this seems pretty below average, but it's fine. I spend one action drawing a card, which will be our intel report. I'm then going to spend another action tapping Daria for two resources, and then my last action spending six to play this intel report. To get two clues, as well as from a location that's not mine, get them off of this. Which brings us to the upkeep phase. We're going to need to discard some cards over here, obviously. I will not be needing the second dragon pull. I will not be taking the enchanted blade. Well, the enchanted blade is objectively better than a prepared for the worst, I guess. And for Jenny, we finally draw. Oh, wait, we haven't hit the fine close yet. But we will eventually. Like, there's no dodging it forever, unfortunately. And top of the round, five of six doom. Evil cards. So I'm going to test three brain. For each point I fail by, I'm either going to get minus two resources, take one horror, or get minus two to my next skill. I'm just really not too afraid of any of these effects. So I'm just going to take the test straight. Which is minus one and I pass. Another hidden card to Daniela. And if she doesn't move, she's going to take one direct damage and one direct horror. So it won't be going off this round, but it'll probably go off pretty soon. I don't... <laughs> to Lily, rather, not Daniela. I'm going to do it first as her. I'm going to play the stand together to give both of us two resources. For my second action, I'm going to draw a card. And for my last action, I am going to probably draw another card. Because we're just not hitting what we need to hit. I'll play this Holy Rosary. Jenny should easily be able to deal with any enemies that get drawn. It shouldn't be a problem. I can move her left twice and start progressing stuff over here. Reviewing the lobby reveals a four shroud, one clue location, and I put in two of these set aside lobby doorways. And I suppose I'll just investigate at six to four. Minus one, easy clip. Brings us to the upkeep phase. What's the condition on flipping my discipline back over? 
uh, it's sort of out of my hands, but it seems like it'll inevitably happen. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my Discipline rather than take the damage on Burden of Destiny, which is Lily's unique weakness. I either have to flip a Discipline to its broken side, where it does nothing, or take one damage, one horror. So instead of getting plus one fist and having the ability to use that action, I have the side that does nothing, and if I take no skill test, then I can flip it back over. And damage and horror is going to be the limiting thing on how long I can stay in the scenario trying to farm experience. And Jenny finally hit her second fine glyphs. We get a 6 of 6 doom, and we reveal the agenda, which spawns the Royal Emissary and the Theater. And because we're playing the Return 2 set, he has this card attached to him. It has the effect, after Royal Emissary is added to the victory display, place one resource on this card as a warning, and for each warning on this card, it's going to get plus 2 health. Right now, though, the card is just a 4 health, 4 fist monster, prey, lowest brain, massive, hunter, retaliate, and the big part is, at the end of each enemy phase, each investigator at Royal Emissary's location or a connecting location it takes one horror. And before we can deal with him, we have to draw our evil cards. We get Spires of Carcosa. Before we talk about those evil cards, actually, let's talk about Agenda 2A, Encore. The creature's song echoes relentlessly throughout the halls of the theater. The melody repeats again and again, yet somehow never the same note twice. And the important part of this, first, after Royal Emissary is added to the victory display, Remove all Doom from play, and then reset the Agenda Act to Agenda 1A, placing 3 Doom on that agenda. So as long as we can keep killing Royal Emissary, which Return 2 will make substantially harder, we can stay here a basically unlimited amount of time, as long as we don't die. Which also gets into Spires of Garcosa. Spires of Garcosa will attach to location and place 2 Doom on that location. Which sounds real bad and real threatening, but when you reset the agenda, we're going to be clearing Doom anyway. Which would be a problem we would have to solve, but since the agenda will remove all Doom from play when we kill the Royal Emissary, it won't be. And since Lily Chen has less brain, it'll always go for Lily Chen, which is what we wanted to begin with. Unfortunately, Lily Chen has just failed to draw another asset to set herself up. What kind of soak am I running? Am I running Tetsuo Amoris and that's it? Yeah. And this is the second time I've searched my deck to see like what was in the deck and seen a spell on top, which is just salt in the wounds. Because now I have to shuffle, and it's probably something else on top. Oh, and it looks like I didn't move on Lily, so she takes one direct of each. So for Lily, I don't have much choice. I'm going to need to draw a card. Because right now, I don't have much in ways of killing this thing. I can only deal two damage with Spectral Razor because it's an elite. So we're going to have to figure out a solution. And the solution, it turned out, was named Second Scrying. Now... Having played that, I still don't want to fight Royal Emissary this turn, because he'll hit me for 2 damage, and 1 horror I can stand, but 2 damage not so much. So I'm going to really hope to not get hit by an auto fail, I'm going to end Jenny's turn in one of these locations. And just use Lily Chen's last action to move here. And this actually isn't really a bad thing. You kind of want to avoid killing Royal Emissary too quickly, because then it starts scaling up faster. Back to Jenny's turn, we're going to need to figure out where she's exploring. Both locations are functionally the same, so I'll go to the top one. Oh, and I don't know if I ever talked about this. There's a double action here to draw three cards. I will... Would I want to use that, actually, before I read what that location did? There's a lot of cards in Jenny's deck that I really want to draw. I don't feel pressed for time on clues. I think the only draw on the deck, really, is Deep Knowledge, so I will spend that double action before I move. Second Well Connected, second Emergency Cash, and Money Talks. Nothing that I was actually looking for. And then my last action will have been to move. And it's the Theater Lounge. Two Shroud, two Clues. Forced, after you reveal it, shuffle the Encounter Discard Pile into the Encounter Deck. Search for the top two hidden cards and secretly add both of those cards to your hand. Shuffle the Encounter Deck. And we take the top two most hidden cards, which will be these two. Feels pretty bad. We've discarding a lot of cards. Actually, no, because it's out of my control if they go off. I did not perform a play action this round, so this one will go off immediately. I did perform a move action though, so the other one won't go off. I'll take one direct of each, and that'll be the end of my turn. Which brings us to the enemy phase. The Royal Emissary is equidistant, so it goes towards its prey, which is a Lily, and Lily's now in an adjacent location, so its forced effect trigger is dealing her one horror. And Jenny has no ill effects. Upkeep phase. We get a weakness, the furthest location from Lily is over here. And her weakness, her basic weakness anyway, is a Cursed Follower. It's a basic 2-2-2 enemy, it spawns at the furthest location from whoever it belongs to. 
And it has the aloof keyword, which means if you go to its location, it won't automatically engage you. You have to engage it. And what it does is it just adds curse tokens to the chaos bag at the end of every round, which we'll get to when we draw them. Jenny is going to need to discard some cards. The second well connected is dead to me. It's hard to imagine needing these emergency caches. Did I play a Faustian bargain and not add curses to the deck? Am I that out of it? Well, thankfully, we haven't really taken any tests that were anything other than easy passes or auto fails so far, but still. Absolutely unacceptably sloppy. Which brings us to our turn. So, talking about auto fails, let's see how Lily does, because she's going to move in, and this is massive, so she's engaged with it now. And she's going to be swinging twice. She's going to be swinging at one and two. Did I take no skill test last round? It's at the end of the round, right? Yes, after the round ends, so during the Mythos phase when I should have been doing that. So we have 1, 2, 3, plus 4 is 7 to hit, which can fail, but I've been wanting to cycle these overpowers all game. So we're going to one overpower to each attack to be attacking at plus 5, and if I hit both of them, I kill it. If I miss either, things get messy. Star. But it doesn't do anything, it just guarantees the hit. We'll draw a card off the first one, and off the second attack. That's always very good to see, I've been wanting some sick. Skull. Minus three, but still a hit. And I'll draw a card off the second overpower as well. And this thing takes four damage, killing it. I'm not going to put it in the victory play properly, so it won't do that every time. Yeah, we're supposed to be using resources to mark this. And now, rather than having four health, next time it's going to have six health. But next time is a ways away. We reset to the third act with three doom. This Doom goes away because that Agenda Forced Effect clears all Doom in play, which discards the Spires of Carcosa. And Lily actually looks like something that makes any degree of sense in her hand right now, as opposed to the mess she's been having. Just going to investigate twice, I'm going to throw Perception at the first test just to cycle it out of my hand. Minus four is definitely a pass. I'm investigating at eight to two. Yeah, still up two at that. This is around the point where I would really have liked to see my Green Man Medallion. I don't need it early, but I do need it eventually, and it still hasn't shown up. The important thing here is because I'm at one clue now, I can spawn a Fanatic with the Lily if I draw one. So I'm just going to draw cards here, because I don't need the stuff in my hand I don't feel like. Emergency Cash and Falsy and Bargain and Cunning just aren't very good cards, and I want this to leave my hand for hand size reasons. So I'm just going to draw two cards as my last actions. Well, that's incredibly unfortunate. The basic weakness I have for Ginny is to reduce her maximum hand size by 5, spend 2 actions to get rid of it. I've only drawn 1 card so far. So I'll be discarding a lot more cards than I would like to if I don't, if I draw another card. So instead, I'll just play a second Falsian Bargain for 5 resources and 2 more Curses. That's ridiculous. I don't need to put Curses in the bag. I'll get 2 less resources to play Emergency Cash. That is not Emergency Cash. I have enough resources with Ginny's ability that I'm never going to run out for the rest of the scenario, so I'd much rather do this. There are no hunter enemies in play, so upkeep phase. Still clear. And for Ginny, we are nowhere near clear. Uh, when my round ended, I had it move, so I take one direct damage and horror. And now because I have a max hand size of three, thanks to my weakness, I need to figure out who gets the stat. Almost all of the damage and horror I've taken has been direct. Like, I've got 3-3 three, three soak, I just can't use it. Breaking and entering is nice. I don't think I'm going to need both copies of Money Talks, but I just like having them. Cunning is definitely out. Falsian Bargain is definitely out. Fine Clothes is definitely out because I'm keeping it for Soak, which means the only question is do I want more Soak or a second Money Talks? I think with all my stuff in play for Clue Finding already, I don't need the second Money Talks. And now we can go to the top of the round, to the Mythos phase, 4 of 6 Doom on Agenda 1 again. And our evil cards are... I just got rid of mine, so I don't take anything from that but it does still have Surge, and we're doing this again. Unfortunately, even though I still really don't want to take the Horror, I'd have to fail by 3 to do that, so I don't really care about this, and plus 1 passes again. And Lily got the Poltergeist, which is sort of obnoxious, because despite the Dragon Pole being really cool, it is not a relic, unlike the Enchanted Blade. Which means I can't kill it other than using this um, ability. And this was probably the last turn that we were going to have to have these two characters far apart, so it does suck to draw Poltergeist on Lily right now. Especially since Lily has a Azure Flames in her deck that I could just use to kill this if I had drawn them. 
I feel like the play is probably use Lily's action on her discipline to evade the poltergeist at eight to four. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. First action, use that. Second action, evade at eight to four, because it's not a hunter. And then we can just move to the theater and not deal with it until Lily's available. Or Jenny, rather. Lily and Jenny is gonna mess with my mouth so much. But since this thing doesn't have Hunter, we have a 50-50 shot of needing to go either way once we progress this act. By the time we do that, we can have Jenny available. Jenny is able to use this parlay ability to kill it very easily because of fine clues and a base bulk of four. So yeah, that sounds good to me. Just don't auto-fail. Easy. This poltergeist is evaded, and Lily's going to walk into the theater. And as a fast action, I will play Talisman of Protection, I guess. Talisman of Protection is a two-cost fast asset that takes up an arcane slot. I have three right now because of Dragon Pull. And it says, as a reaction, when you're defeated by damage and or horror, discard Talisman of Protection and cancel up to two of that damage and or horror. I don't need it yet, but I might need it later. And I don't need all these resources ever. That's very apparent. You know, I probably should have used Well Connected on that check. Like, this card is in play, and it does give me plus four right now to a skill check. Probably worth using. I think what I probably do is discard drawing the sign and draw three cards. Or draw one card, rather. There's no reason not to get the clue, I guess. That's just silly of me. So yeah, I'm going to discard drawing the sign and get a clue. First action, discard this. Or first and second action, rather. And then investigate at six to two. And since I have no tests left in this round, I'll use well-connected, just on auto-fail. Now, no hunter enemies in play. Upkeep phase, the poltergeist readies. We have another talisman of protection now, which I guess we can give to Jenny. And a Jenny finally hit Christopher Milan, who is a really good card, but again, probably never getting played. Like, I've already got a plus one book ally and infinite money. I don't think I've been playing events. I probably have on Jenny, right? Like, how could I have possibly not? Yeah, I definitely didn't test that for emergency cash. So I'll go ahead and quickly check for a face token to see if I should be getting rid of it for emergency cash. And all right, cool. Hopefully that's the only one I missed. Top of the round, five of six doom and evil cards. Spires of Urkosa again, but this does absolutely nothing. I'm not going to bother putting the doom down. Because it's going to progress next turn no matter what. I'm just going to put this straight in the discard pile to make things clear. And Spirit's Torment does do something, and being in the theater is kind of obnoxious. Because I might not necessarily want to kill this thing immediately. I just wanted to be on the other side of the theater from the Poltergeist. Well, we're definitely killing it immediately this time through, it looks like. No, that's not true. I can just lose an action. That seems fine, actually. I'm going to move twice. Then I lose one action to Spirit's Torment, which reveals this lobby doorway. Five Shroud, two clues, investigate, you get plus three buck for this investigation. After this skill test ends, this card each card in your hand. Or I could just like get the clues with through a five shroud location. It's not that big of a deal game. My first action, I'm going to move down as Jenny. And I think I'm gonna draw three cards again. Because I really need to find Green Man Medallion. So I'm gonna use this location's ability again. Green Man Medallion in the bottom eight, as always. But luckily, I don't think it'll cost us that much experience in this scenario. Anyway, upkeep phase. We have to start discarding cards here. I don't think I'll be needing to get any clues on Lily in this campaign, so I'll just toss the six cents. Not in this campaign, but in this scenario. And on Ginny's end, we hit our deep knowledge. Top of the round, six doom. We progress the act. And the emissary spawns in the theater again. This thing has been in place so many times, I've been forgetting to add curse tokens. I almost want to add four to the bag and call it fair, in case I forgot a card, and I've definitely forgot this for at least two, probably three turns. Jesus Christ. Something about commentating while playing this game is really throwing me off. I need to get used to it, because the amount of slop that is happening in these videos is not okay. Did Lily avoid taking a skill test last turn? Yes, she moved three times. So the really fun thing here for Jenny is that when I play Deep Knowledge, I have to add the curse tokens first and then see if Deep Knowledge goes off. I had to think about that interaction for a little bit. 
But let's see how it goes. Easy. Now we'll draw three cards. Finally hit the Green Man Medallion, which goes into play immediately. And we are now going to start using this fast action constantly to put three resources on the Green Man Medallion. And what I'm instead going to do is use this green counter here to track it, because this is going to get real messy real fast. I suppose I should consider, like, actually moving out of the way of the Emissary, so I'm going to do that as my last action. For Lily, I need to get these curse tokens out of the bag. First action, I'll engage with the Cursed Follower. You cannot attack aloof enemies without engaging them. And then I'm just going to swing at, like, a million to two, but curse tokens make the math matter, so... At 8 to 2. Minus 3 kills it. I remove a curse in the bag. In which case I'll play Tetsuo as my last action. Not quite though, because as a fast action I'll go ahead and throw Jenny the other Talisman of Protection. Enemy phase. Royal Emissary moves over. And his forced effect goes off, dealing one horror to each of us, which I will throw onto our allies, because absolutely not going on us. We're taking enough horror from forced effects on the Mythos deck. And then upkeep phase. Intel report gets to stay. Cheap shot gets to stay. I can't imagine a world where I ever play Dario here. Or Milan, rather. Because I have to play the second Dario first for Soak. Breaking and entering at this point is basically a guaranteed evade, which I already have with Well Connected. And Cheap Shot. So, I don't feel much need to keep that either. And top of the round. One of six Doom, and encounter cards. A Fanatic spawns. And unfortunately, this one will spawn at our location and take one of the clues. I think what I'm going to do is spawn it with Ginny and just evade using Well Connected. Or Breaking and Entering, rather. That seems like the way to handle this. Because I would like to deal with the Royal Emissary this round. Can I actually deal with it without camping its spawn? I'm going to hit for two. I guess it's not a big deal if I do. I just didn't want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Breaking and Entering to get this clue and evade this man. Then move and evade it with Jenna. So, let's see if that plan works. Breaking and Entering. I'm going to add my foot and my book together. For seven to five. I'm going to commit Unexpected Curse to this, get up to, to a 9 to 5, so I'm at plus 4. Minus 1, easy pass. This man is evaded. He seems to have lost his clue under the discard button. And I get this clue. Next, I'm going to move in and evade again against the Royal Emissary. And I suppose I can evade with Cheap Shot. I don't need to, though, is the thing. Oh, damn it. Painful reflection. No problems. Everything happened, as I said. Much like Rex's ability, cards like this while I'm recording are just something that's taking too many different parts of my brain in different directions at the moment. I'll get there. So, I could cheap shot. It seems unnecessary. I'll just well-connected and get plus five to my base three foot. Actually, that's... Only up six, which like I know is a lot, but there's a lot of curse tokens in the bag right now. So I'll use cheap shot as well to be up nine. Oh, and breaking and entering probably has a cost on it, doesn't it? Which I should pay. Yeah, it costs two, and this cheap shot costs two as well. So I need to spend four resources. So I'm not up nine, I'm up eight, because well connected is a little bit less now. Cool. Grossly over succeeded. He's exhausted, he's not hitting anyone for two damage. Which means our horror soak gets to stay alive. That's the big thing, is I didn't want Tetsuo to die and cost her to have more horror. And he also takes one damage. Lily could easily kill this fanatic, but just as well, we don't ever need to deal with that fanatic. I'll have her move back. And I'm going to attack twice. It's massive, so there's no penalty for missing. I'm looking at my hand real hard, trying to find some way that I'm like supposed to play this cleverly around curse tokens, and the answer is you just roll. I'm attacking at 8 to 4, and, and you know, you miss sometimes. Minus 3 is not a time that I miss, though. So that is a little bit more damage. We're at 3 of 6. And last swing. 
Star doesn't do anything, but it does get it one damage off dead. Enemy phase, nothing happens. Upkeep phase, all these enemies ready. And we get our upkeep turns now. Hey, Sacrificial Beast spawns in. And it's the location furthest, right? Yep, so I'm putting it up here. And Jenny Barnes no longer generates money, except via the one money that everyone gets per turn until somebody kills Sacrificial Beast. Which may happen and it may not, but regardless, we have enough money now. Oh, and let's pretend I tapped this last turn and used it, because I obviously would have. I was just so distracted by how bad I am at dealing with painful reflection that I forgot to say it. Anyway, top of the round, two of six doom. And encounter cards. This time, I'm going to use my well connected to make sure I don't get any penalties unless I auto fail. Toss this. Spirit's Torment is going to attach to our location again. And now leaving will call us as actions or clues. Now, this probably looks a little bit weird to you. I imagine most people don't have this many active enemies just hanging around in their curtain call. But the weird thing is that it kind of doesn't matter that they're here. I never need to come to any of these locations. This is the only enemy on the board that actually could potentially continue to matter. You can play Curtain Call incredibly slowly if you can reliably deal with Royal Emissary. I did not do its forced end of round horror effect though, so I will be killing my Dario. Do I want to do that? Yes, obviously. And my Tatsuo. And when Tatsuo dies, I can search my cards for an item. I don't think there's one that I would want here because I've already got both talismans. I don't think either character has one, but since Jenny only has two cards, I'll use it over here. And I'll pull out the second um, Enchanted Blade just so I don't have a chance of trolling it. And that brings us to our turn. I'm going to start the turn as Lily, but before I do anything, I'm going to progress the act. A shadow creeps along the wall beside you and your heart leaps into your throat. You turn and a figure flits away out of sight. Either your mind is playing tricks on you or someone else in the theater. You follow the direction of the shadow, rounding a nearby corner. At the far end of the hall, he stands awaiting you. A man in an elegant black suit his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognize him as the actor who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears through an open doorway as if taunting you to follow. And then I choose one of the remaining locations from random, so we put him in a stack, we shuffle, and we take the top, which is backstage, unfortunately, so we're going to have to go through that poltergeist. We put it into play, we spawn the set-aside man in the pallet mask at that location. And then we advance to one of the many set-aside copies of Act 2A. Act 2A, The Stranger. The mysterious stranger from the King in Yellow might know something about what happened during the intermission. You must find and confront him if you are to discover the truth. Objective, when the man in the pallid mask would be discarded from play, advance. So the man in the pallid mask down here is an enemy. He's aloof and has some decent stats, but he's easily enough to kill. And if you don't have the ability to kill him, you can investigate his location at plus two shroud. But instead of getting a clue, you defeat the man in the pallid mask. This is an act we can progress almost immediately. We can easily be done with this next turn. Once we do, however, the theater is going to start burning down or flooding or some other catastrophic thing, depending on which random act I got. So I'm just not going to do this for a while, and the theater is going to stay fine, and Ginny's going to get lots and lots of experience, and once we're like relatively close to dying, then we're going to leave. Because as you can see, when we progress the act, we're going to add either cultist, tablins, or squids into the bag, which are not only basically an auto fail at minus four, but if your location has a horror on it, which it will after a couple of turns, take one horror. So you rapidly snowball into a position where you're either dead or you have to leave once you progress the act. So I'm just not going to. Anyway, like I said, Lily's taking her turn first, and we're going to kill the Royal Emissary with a basic punch action. That is an easy pass, and we'll remove a curse. Roll Emissary is dead again. He has a second warning now. Set him aside. Progress to three do on Agenda 1. Evidently, I was supposed to toss an item over here. I'll toss an Enchanted Blade. Main reason to get it off of Tetsuo was just to avoid drawing it. 
Drawing doesn't really do anything, nor does playing, so I'm going to spend my actions as efficiently as possible and just spend two actions to move because we never need to go left again. Because again, Spirit's Torment, while it's in play, is just going to cost me an action. For Ginny, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to spend multiple actions getting rid of that, but I'm going to spend one action to be got done with it forever. I'm going to subtract one money now. Um, the game automatically gives you the extra money for being Ginny Barnes. However, that doesn't take into account Sacrificial Beasts in play, so it's giving me one extra money. I have to remember to manually click my money back down every upkeep phase, because I shouldn't be getting Ginny's ability right now. I want the Soak in play that Dario represents. So I'll spend four to do that, and then I'll spend three to upgrade this counter. And that's the round. Enemy phase, nobody does anything, they all just hang out, and upkeep phase. And we need to take Jenny's money down by one, because I'm getting too much right now. Four of six doom, and encounter cards. So I'm going to test brain four, because we're at four doom, and if I fail, I'll discard two cards at random. That's not a big deal, but I may as well well connected that. Easy pass, get out of here. And Lily's evil card is the Agent of the King. Which is a victory point monster that is another reason we want to take this scenario very slowly, because we have to eventually draw this. It's a 4-4 monster that hits for 1-2. Hunter, it would have prey most clues, but it's never going to be disengaged from Lily. And after it attacks you, it takes one of your clues, and when you kill it, you get all the clues back. Now, in reality, it's just dead immediately because I'm just swinging my dragon pole over here. That is minus seven, so I'm going to not pass that one. But it's fine, I've got more attempts. Minus three is a hit because Lily is ridiculous. And then I'll swing again and kill it. And on Ginny's end, I don't want to deal with losing actions to the Spirit's Torment. I actually kind of can't because it would put me next to the Poltergeist with one action. So I'm going to spend my first action getting rid of this by dropping a clue. Oh, I don't have any clues to drop. That's terribly awkward. And likewise, I can't actually go here and dodge this as well connected because I've just used my well connected. I can use money talks though. So I'll do that. I'll spend two actions to move over here. And then I'll attempt to evade this man with well connected. Not with well connected, with money talks. Which means I'm testing at seven to three. Sheep shot better than that? No. I could use Sheep Shot in addition to it, but it feels unnecessary. Minus two, we evade the Poltergeist. He'll ready and engage with us next turn, but we don't get hit for two sanity damage. So, upkeep phase, this man's going to ready. Lily, once again, does not get two resources. And top of the round, five of six doom. And counter cards. We get a Fanatic. Unfortunately, there is a location with a clue. It is Ginny's location. And Lily's evil card is hidden. We should probably discard some stuff, though. I'm up two cards, so Enchanted Blade needs to go. And I believe I forgot to use Green Name Medallion again last turn, because I'm supposed to be doing it at the end of my rounds. I know a way to fix this. I'm putting the clicker up here. That way, when I flip my last icon, I'll be like, oh yeah, do this thing. As Lily, I'm going to go first. I'm going to move here as two actions. I'm going to use two resources to play Spectral Razor. Going to engage with and attack the Fanatic. I'm attacking at 5 plus 3 is 8 to 3. Easily kill him. And I'll take this clip. On Jenny's turn, I'm just going to try to parlay this Poltergeist at 4 to 1 three times. Probably going to get it on the first two, though. One damage and two damage, it is dead because it only has two health and the parlay deals one damage each. <sighs> I should have tested the face thing when I did painful reflection. And that is not one of those tokens, so we would have been fine. Hilariously curses and blesses dilute the bag of face tokens. I think the right thing for Jenny to do is to move down here. I'm not going to deal with the man in the pallid mask. I'm just going to move down here to be doing something useful. Actually, I think it's to shuffle my deck right now. It's just to draw a card. Which deals me a horror, which I'll be putting on Dario. I don't actually think there's a benefit to moving away to Lily. I'm going to be sandbagging for a lot more turns. 
to the point where I might just edit to the end relatively soon once you like have the idea pretty firmly that I could finish this whenever I wanted. We might already be at that point, to be honest. Oh, and we're going to use her ability on the Green Man Medallion, even though it's bankrupt here. And we're up to a two and a half experience right now, which is still just completely fine. Hey everyone, this is me doing post commentary. It turns out that the video ends an hour and 34 minutes in right now. The end of the edited stuff is 44 minutes in. The video is going to be close to twice as long as this if I don't edit out me sandbagging. And I'm not going to not sandbag. This number right here, this 15, it gets up pretty damn high. It nearly pays for double double on its own. So I could go through and edit all of this and produce a monstrously long hour and a half video where the next 15 minutes are the same as the preceding 15 minutes. Or I could cut to about here, which is, I think, when I progress the act, maybe a little bit later. But yeah, I'm going to cut out a lot of this, because my time and your time has more value than watching this. Anyway, I'm not even going to attempt to segue into wherever I'm cutting at, so just bear with me. So, Jenny first. I'm at a three-trial location. I need to get the last clue. I don't care about my hand size limitation at all. I'm going to investigate at 6 to 3. And to pass, removing a curse token. Getting the last clue for this victory points. My plan, I think... Jenny's at 5-5. Five, five. That's so much fucking damage she's taking. I don't know if she can actually take the balcony damage. I don't know if it's 1 or 2. Well, Tetsuo can take it. I'm sure he's not thrilled to hear that, but that's where we're at. Yeah, we're not getting double-double. It's just unreasonable to expect it. We're probably going to kill this thing and then bail next time. Especially with the Spirit's Torments in our way. I'm trying to figure out if I need to start escaping now. Or if I need to start escaping next turn. Or the turn after. And I think it's now. I think I have to do the Man in the Paladin Mask. So I'll take this Investigate check at plus 2 Shroud. The Shroud location is going to be at 5. I use Well Connected to get plus 4. Or am I already 6 for 10 to 5? Minus 1. Cool, so we would defeat the man in the pallid mask. However, instead we're going to advance the act. As you face off with the stranger, you get the sense that he's grinning beneath his pale, faceless mask. Where is everyone, you ask? But he doesn't respond. What's going on? He remains silent and steps back as you approach, till his back is against the corner of the room. Then he opens his mouth and out emerges the most horrifying sound you've ever heard. It's as if the buzzing of hundreds of locusts and the grating of rusted metal hide and even more terrible scream of pain and agony within. By the time you recover, the stranger is gone. Instead of discarding the man in the pallet mask, move him to the lobby, which I believe is this location. Add one tablet and one squid token to the chaos bag. Place one horror on the lobby. Until the end of the scenario, horror on locations represents the awful screeching of the stranger in each location with the horror locations forced after you enter this location or in your turn at this location, test to brain. If you fail, take one horror, limit once per round. Keep this card next to the act deck as a reminder and advance. And now our goal is to resign. While the man in the pallet mask is not in play, you can resign from the lobby. And forced at the end of each round, place one horror on each location with no horror that is connected to a location with horror. If each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. Shinny's last action, I'm going to move up. And I am going to uh, tap this, of course. And this should trigger, I believe. Yes. I will take 1-1 one, one direct. We're getting to the point where it's sort of impossible to justify staying because we're going to at some point have to risk taking horror damage and it's better to get out now. For Lily's turn, I'm going to move into the theater, getting ready to kill the Royal Emissary when it respawns. Going to spend three resources playing Tetsuo. And I think I spent three resources playing Azure Flame as well. Just to protect myself from La Comtesse's effect next turn. And that's the end of the round. So, top of the round, six Doom, we progress the act, or the agenda, again. He's back. This is the last time we'll be fighting him. Uh, thanks game, that was really helpful. He's at ten health this time. And I might have skipped the upkeep phase, kind of an important step. This kills my Holy Rosary, because I've reshuffled my deck and taken a horror. And for Jenny, money talks. Not a whole lot going on there. So like I was saying, now we're at the top of the round, 
and this mana spawns, and we draw our evil cards. Twisted 2 as well. There's no demon play, gain surge. Well, we're at 3 of 6, actually, because we always reset to 3 of 6. If you fail, discard 2 cards from your hand at random, and we're testing Brain 3. I feel like I'm in a spot where the best thing to do is use uh, Money Talks here. Because it gives me a chance to get rid of this card first. So first I'm going to try to use Money Talks. Okay, cool. Money Talks goes through. And that means I'm testing at 10 to 4, or 10 to 3 rather. Cool, I failed at 10 to 3. Uh, that's minus 9. First let's remove those curse tokens. And now I discard two cards at random in my hand, which are guaranteed to be cheap shot at Intel Report. Awesome. I guess the correct play then was to use Well Connected so that there was a chance I didn't lose Intel Report. Oh well. And Black Stars Rise immediately. Uh, failing this has no penalty because we're going to be killing the Royal Emissary, so gaining Doom doesn't matter. We should be at 1 of 6. I think I just increased it to 3 after spawning the Emissary as opposed to after killing him because I'm just not here today, apparently. And of course, at the end of the round, which is the Mythos phase, it's all basically the same thing. We need to add Horror to all these locations. I should have done that first because it does affect the skill rolls on evil cards. I wasn't thinking about it. Which is just the theme of today. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer at the start of this video apologizing for being so on tilt today and playing so poorly. And all Horror does is when someone enters this location or they end their turn at this location, they test two brain, and if you fail, you take one horror, and you can only take the horror once per round. This is the part where if I'm really comically unlucky, I can just die to pulling repeated horror damage. But this is what we have um, Talisman here for. So first up, Lily's going to swing three consecutive times. That's just always the plan. So we're swinging at eight to four, as always. That's 2 damage, 4 damage, 6 damage. Good job, Lily. Unfortunately, he does have more health than that. Next up, Jenny's going to enter the location. And she's going to evade with Well Connected at 4, 3, 7 to 2, I think. Yes. Minus 5 is still a pass this time. My hand size doesn't seem very important anymore. I don't think I'll be getting rid of drawing the signs. And now we'll just take one horror instead of two damage, which is very important because it means Tetsuo isn't dying. So she has a lot more horror to work with for the rest of the scenario. I'm going to drop one of my clues here in the theater to get rid of this so that we can move more freely. As my last action, and I'm going to tap Green Man Medallion for three more points. Enemy phase. No hunters. Of course, we did both end our turn in this location, so we have to take a Brain 2 test, and if we fail, we take one Horror. Star is all good, and minus 2 is all good. Enemy phase, nothing happens. Upkeep phase. The Royal Emissary readies. Top of the round, 2 of 6 Doom, and we draw our encounter cards. We're at 2 of 6, so we... I mean, I'd rather not lose my second Intel report to this, but I think it's wrong to use well-connected. It's definitely right to use well-connected. What am I talking about? Uh, testing 2 to... Just don't auto-fail. Minus 4. I have to check now. That's exactly fine. Way more than exactly fine. We're up to So we get to keep our Intel report, but we lost our well-connected. Over here... I put that in the wrong deck, apparently. That should have been <laughs> over here. I just clicked discard on it. The slop never ends, does it? We spawn a fanatic. Which can only spawn in our current location because we've just placed a clue in it. This thing has three foot, so it's actually kind of hard for Jenny to evade without well connected. It only hits for one, though. Okay, I can give it to um, Lily. It'll be fine. And it will take this clue. I didn't realize that I was just like entirely lying on Lily to be our damage in scenario one. Probably like a little bit more belief in her than I should have given her, but she's been doing it fine. I guess part of that's that there's not that many enemies in the scenario, it's really just the one. It's still fairly impressive. It's one big ass enemy that she has to kill every couple of turns. So let's see how she's doing with that. Um, we're at eight to four. That's two more damage. Is this going to finish it? Yes, it is. Cool. Once again, it's dead. 
Once again, we reset to 3D on Agenda 1. We go up to 4 warnings. We're not going to be doing that again. We need to get out of here. And sadly, I can't kill this in one action. Actually, I can. I spend 2 resources to play Spectral Razor. Since it's not elite, I'll deal 3 instead of 2. Actually, because I have Painful, Re painful Reflection and Melancholy, which I'm sure I've been failing to test for, so I've just been keeping the penalty, um, this can cause me to take a Horror which would be far worse than taking a damage here. I know it looks the same, but I take horror from the tokens and from the, uh, the act. So I think I'd rather just guaranteed take one damage than risk taking the horror. It sounds awful, but it's definitely what's happening, I think. I can also just believe. Like, I haven't managed to trigger them once so far. Sure, I'll just believe. I spend three because of melancholy, and I pull a token, and it's a minus two. Cool. So I get to actually use the ability and attack this at 8 to 3. Huh, it's always the same number, isn't it? Cool, I get rid of a curse token as well, and kill this man. And I get the clue. Or Lily gets the clue, rather. End of the round, I have to test multiple things. I have to test Brain because I'm in this horror location. Skull is minus 3, so that's definitely a failure. Sorry about that, Tetsuo. And I also have to test Brain because of Melancholy. Squid. So not only do I fail that, I get to take one Horror because of Melancholy. Or rather, one Horror because of the Curtain Call Scenario card. And I'm in a location with Horror on it, and this is just how things get messy right at the end, very, very quickly. As Jenny Barnes, I'm going to move left. I need to deal with the Man in the Pallet Mask as my second action. Which isn't that hard. Actually, it's pretty damn hard. In fact, I kind of feel like I can't do it. Investigating at 6 is pretty hard. I might actually need to have Lily kill him this time. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a clue at this location to kill this ability. The Spirit's Torment. Oh, I have to test Brain every time I enter one, don't I? Yep, okay, so I'm going to test Brain initially. I can only fail it once. I get rid of a Curse Token. That was minus two. The brain test is only two, so I pass thanks to Dario. If I move again, I'll have to test again. But Jenny is basically fine right now, so I'm absolutely going to. Before I move, I take my brain test and I pass. The bigger fear isn't even failing. Like, you can fail, but it's failing with these tablets and squids that I just added. They're going to take me to cause me to take two horror, because not only will I fail, but I'll also take the one horror from that token. I'll move up to the balcony finally and reveal it as my last action. After you perform a move action during which you move from the balcony to the theater, take two damage. Don't think I'll be doing that in this scenario. It seems sort of beside the point. All right. Enemy phase, nothing happens. Upkeep phase. Oh, before we do, I tap Green Man Medallion. And now we do upkeep phase. Nothing really changing there. Top of the round, four of six doom. And evil cards. Poltergeist. That's actually a fine place to have it, because it means we can just evade it up here and never deal with it. And a hidden card for Lily. Lily's probably going to be bailing very soon. I think I'm going to have to use a draw action this turn to not take the damage, and then next turn I'm going to try to kill the man in the Paladin Mask. Because if I take 1-1 one, one direct on this, I've got no soak in play, it's just incredibly sketchy. I'm going to move over, which requires me to take a Brain 2 test. I'm at a point where I'm seriously considering committing Promise of Power to it, because it's one of the last tests that I have to take. And getting the squid and taking two horror would suck. Let me look up the timing rules, actually. Okay, so all skill test results are out at the same time. The stuff from the tokens and the stuff from the actual skill test all resolve simultaneously. The reason that's important is because it means if I fail this skill test, I'll take two horror. So I'm just defeated by saving damage, I can just use Talisman of Protection instead. I thought it would be one and then one, but I don't think that's how it works, so I'm just going to take the head test straight. Auto fail. Well, that only deals one. Committing skills wouldn't help, but that's not a good thing. That's real bad. There's a chance that we're taking a mental trauma on Lily here, which is unfortunate. I can't kill this turn, and I can't take the direct horror, so I'm going to draw a card. We can definitely kill next turn thanks to Spectral Razor's action efficiency. We just have to survive the checks. Oh my god, we have to draw a card to not take horror from this, which gives us horror from Lockham Tess anyway. 
I think it's pretty clear that the best thing I can do is actually to draw another card to dig harder for a Rosary or another Tetsuo. Or just skills for test. Because upkeep phase, I'm discarding everything anyway. There's nothing I can do because engaging this man just kills me. And I'll have the ability to kill him this turn. Alright, cool. On Jenny's end, we're going to parlay with this man. By parlay, I mean dodge. First action, I attempt to dodge with well connected. Gives me four to my base three, putting me up by three. Minus three is enough. He's dodged. And I'm going to get both these clues with an intel report for four. Last action, I believe, is to come down and take my brain test. There's nothing to commit to it, so it's just four to two. Easy. And now I end my turn in one, so I take another one. That one will be a failure, and I'll take one horror. Which will kill my shirt. And before we end the round, we're going to tap Green Man Medallion, lose three resources, and tick up three times. Let's pretend I wasn't insane, and I remember this existed a single time. Jesus fucking Christ. I wonder how much less I'd be tilted if this card didn't exist, and every time I retested a thing to see if I cheated, it came out to be the same. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling with it so much. I'm just having a really off day. Because it's not a complicated effect. It's really straightforward. It's just like, it doesn't happen for most of your checks. So don't think about it when I'm doing events either. Anyway, I dodged, moved, and used Intel Report. So that's the turn. Upkeep phase. Enemies? No one's doing anything. Upkeep phase. I take one horror here, breaking my talisman of protection, because La Comtesse deals a horror when I'm forced to discard all this trash. I have to toss one more card. Keep guts over our overpower here, because I have to pass this initial brain test to stay alive. And upkeep phase for Jenny. Bit late for the deep knowledge as we're leaving this turn. We didn't quite get the 48 experience we wanted, but we did get 42. We got 7 of the 8 for double-double, which is pretty fucking good. Top of the round, 5 of 6 Doom, cutting it a bit close. Evil card is putting Doom on my location. Oh no. This is the second time we've drawn it at a position where it literally cannot matter. Evil card over here. More Melancholy. We're not going to be playing cards, is what I've learned. Well, we are going to be playing cards, that's totally untrue. Lily's going to go first, she's going to test Brain, she's going to get Promise of Power to this Brain test. And Guts. So that is 5-9 to 2. And no, that is not Overkill. Minus 4. Good enough for me. I'll take my card draw as well. Wait, why am I even going first with Lily? I just forgot that I could kill the man in the pallet mask now that I've got a working well connected again. Let's put a pen in Lily and go first with Jenny. Because it feels like Jenny's much more likely to pass, right? Yeah, I'm just going to use the man in the pallet mask ability to investigate at 6-6 six to six base. Use well connected to be up 3 and commit Milan to be up 4. And that just seems like it almost always handles this. First, let's do our brain test, which I have no input into. I'm just taking it straight. Minus one is a pass. And then I'm going to be up four on this well-connected investigate check. Up three, whatever that. The zero is a pass. The man in the pallid mask is defeated. Huh. Now this location has resign. I will spend three resources, ticking up the green man medallion. And I will resign gracefully. And Lily, having passed her brain check, will resign as well. If that wasn't the nastiest game of curtain call you've ever seen, I don't know what is. We may have just chosen to hang out and kill Royal Emissary four times. We've intentionally left enemies all over the board and just chosen not to deal with them. But we also walked out of here with seven free experience and all the victory points. So as jank and nasty and weird as it looks, it's hard to say that it was wrong or bad. Anyway, we've both resigned. That was our objective.
The stranger gives you a slight bow as he steps through the lobby's front entrance, opening a glass door that wasn't there a moment before. A sudden cacophony of noise erupts around you, and you fear that the building is only seconds before it's destroyed. You flee, crashing through the front doors and leaving the ruined theater in your wake. Several blocks away, you take a moment to rest and think about what you've witnessed. And we have to decide, do we warn the police, or are we going to solve this on our own? And I mean, this blew my mind the first time. Apparently warning the police is what you do if you're convicted. And thinking the police won't believe you because this is crazy is doubtful. That seems completely backwards to me. I'm going to be going with conviction this run, and I'm going to warn the police. Resolution 1. And this is the part where I'm going to stop reading flavor text because the video is already too damn long. The police didn't believe us. Did I really think the police would help? In my campaign log, I recorded that I tried to warn the police and mark one conviction. I did not steal from the box office. I need to record that the stranger is owned to me and add the man of the pallid mass weakness to somebody's deck. As always, if I don't specify lead investigator, it's whoever is on the left, so it's going to Jenny. In my campaign log, under Chasing the Stranger, I'm going to place two tally marks, and from here on out, any time I kill the man in the pallid mask, I'm going to add one more tally mark. And we all earn victory experience equal to victory X. We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because emissary is 2. Which I'm putting him next to it because every time I put him in here, that happens. That's 9 experience for Lily and Jenny, and Jenny gets an additional 7 that has to all be spent on one card. And I think I'll be doing my upgrades at the start of videos, not at the ends of them. So for now, I'm done. I've been Rather Incoherent. I hope you enjoyed this video in spite of all of my constant play errors just because I'm not used to recording. And I'll see you in the next one.